if you are wondering what I am doing, this is called cross etching and it's a beautiful technique used by artists to create sketches. Don't be afraid, I am not going to make you a sketch artist nor I can do sketches. Today we are going to create this in our favorite software that is Photoshop and turn an image like this into something like this. Hi guys, welcome to Rexplorian. For those who have never been to this channel, I am Didi and this channel is all about designing in Photoshop and sharing the process with you. And along with that, we explore various tools, techniques and tips and tricks which can definitely improve your workflow and level up your graphic design game. As I've shown you earlier, in this technique, we draw a layer of multiple parallel and intersecting lines and go on adding more layers of these lines on top of the other to achieve various tones in the sketch. In the shadow areas, the lines are dense and the less dense or white areas represent the highlights of the sketch. This is a very simple way of putting it and it takes a lot of practice to master this technique. We might not be able to achieve exactly the same result as with a hand-drawn sketch, but our result will definitely be a close one. You will see for yourself. So let's not waste any more time and get to the screen. I'll be creating my usual A4 size canvas. You can choose whatever canvas size you want and now we bring in the image we'll be working with. I recently discovered an awesome stock image website, Lumi.ai. The website features an extensive collection of AI generated images in almost all categories which you can use in your projects. Check out the website and I will also provide the download link of the image we are using today in the description. Feel free to use any image you like but pay attention to its exposure while selecting. Choose an image that's well exposed with more highlighted areas than the shadows and you will be good. Another thing, if your image is not black and white, then you have to turn it into black and white and there are multiple ways of doing this in Photoshop and you can do it in whatever way you like. Now moving on, we have to remove the background from the image. I will skip this part because I have made separate videos covering the background removal process. If you are interested, you will find the videos in the dedicated playlist on the channel page. I will suggest not to rush in this process, take a little time and be as precise as possible because it will affect your end results. And after doing all the work, this is what we have here. Our next step will be to do some adjustments to our subject and for that we can add a levels adjustment layer so that we can control the whites and blacks in the image by adjusting these sliders here. But if you ask me, I prefer doing the same with the curves adjustment layer. So I will delete the levels and add a curves adjustment layer. We'll add a point on this line by clicking here. This part controls the shadows and we'll drag this point down to make the shadows darker. We'll add another point here which is the highlights area and we have to move it up to brighten the highlights. And we'll continue doing the adjustments till we are satisfied. It's done and now we'll clip the adjustment layer to the image layer by holding the Alt or Option key and clicking in between the layers so that it affects only the image. Then we'll add a solid color adjustment layer, make the color white. You can choose any color you want and we'll place it below the image layer and it will be our background. We'll leave it like this for the time being and click on the home button here and create a new 10 pixels by 10 pixels canvas. Background content will be white and we'll click on create. It will be a small canvas and we'll zoom out to fit our screen. Then we'll take the rectangular marquee tool and create a selection of the half of the canvas like this. We'll then press Ctrl or Command I to invert the selection and it will turn black. Press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. Now we go to filter then blur and then click on box blur. We are gonna adjust the radius sliders and you will notice these boxes with gradient from black to white. I will set it to 3 but I will suggest you to do your part of experimenting with the numbers. I will hit ok and now we will use this as a pattern. To do that we have to first save it as a pattern and for that we go to edit and click on define pattern. You can give it a name of your own. I will leave it as it is and click OK. It is saved and now we can close the canvas without saving it. Now we have to make a texture with this pattern. We will again go to the home and create another canvas and this time it will be 4000 by 4000 pixels. Resolution will be 300 and we are gonna make it transparent. We will fill it with the pattern we just created and for that we go to edit and this time click on fill. Make sure the content drop down is set to pattern and we will find the pattern we just created here. Select that and click OK. We will notice the canvas is filled with lines but if you zoom in you will be able to see the pattern. What has happened here is the whole canvas is being filled up with the pattern 4000 times and now it's appearing like lines. We are gonna apply a filter to it and it's gonna be under distort and it will be wave. The first slider controls the number of the waves you want. 
I will set it to 10. The wavelength, I will keep it around 190 for minimum and 210 for maximum. And amplitude 9 and 10. Don't think that these numbers have to be always like this. Experiment with them and you might be able to create something more beautiful. And moreover, it will be changing depending on the image we'll be using. Just make sure to set the type to sign here and we'll hit OK. And now the lines are changed into waves. Are you feeling the same dizziness as I am? Now we'll press Ctrl or Command A to select all that we have on this layer and then press Ctrl or Command C to copy that and it will be copied to the clipboard. Then we'll add a solid color adjustment layer above it and make it 50% gray. How? Here in the B value just tap 50 and rest everything will take care of itself and then hit OK. See the layer mask of the gray layer? We'll hold the Alt or Option key and select it and now press Ctrl or Command V to paste the wave we copied earlier in the layer mask. If you see the marching ends of the selection, just press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. Then we press Ctrl or Command T to activate the transform tool and right click anywhere on the canvas and then click on rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Click on the tick icon to confirm and now when we zoom in, you can notice the texture. Isn't it amazing? And it's the same amazing feeling when I see you liking the video. It means a lot to me and keeps me going. And if you are interested in similar kind of contents, then I would request you to subscribe the channel. And do not forget to press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I post a new video. Coming back, we will select both the layers and press Ctrl or Command E to merge them together into a single layer. Rename it as Pattern and then click and drag and bring it to our main canvas. We don't need this canvas anymore, but you can keep it if you want. I will place it at the center and then change its blend mode to hard mix. And now when we zoom in, you can notice the cross edge effect. We'll clip the pattern layer to the image layer. I see a little tint of green in the image. Did you notice that? It seems like I have to convert it into black and white anyways. And for that, I will select the image layer and go to image, then adjustment and then click on black and white. If you remember, we noticed some yellows and greens in the image. So we will adjust these sliders and now we have to decide whether to make those yellow pixels white or black. If you want it white, bring the sliders to the right and if you want it black, then take the sliders to the left. I want them to be white. We'll do the same for the green. All other sliders are ineffective here, so we'll leave them as they are and hit OK. Now we'll select the curves layer and adjust it a little more. And now it's looking like a sketch. What do you think? If you want, you can stop here, but I want to take it a little further and make it more realistic and all that have to be done manually. If it's a little overwhelming for you, it's totally fine. You can stop the video here. But if you decide to stick around a little more, I can promise you won't regret and the end result will be worth it. First, we're going to work on the hairs of the subject and for that, we will create a blank layer and make a selection of the subject. And how do we do that? Hold the Ctrl or Command key and click on the layer mask of the image layer and it will be selected. Now we take the brush tool, adjust the brush size by pressing the right or left square bracket keys. Keep the color black and we'll paint over the hair area. The selection will restrict the brush color inside the area. And then we'll adjust the opacity of this layer so that it can blend in. Let's refine it a little more. I'll right click on the canvas to open the brush settings and select the soft round brush and continue painting so that the edges become a little soft. If you have accidentally gone out of the line like me, don't worry, we'll take the eraser tool and paint over the unwanted areas and they are gone. Let's quickly finish it up. We'll rename the layer as hairs. Let's clip the pattern layer again and select the hairs and the image layer by holding the controller command key and link them to each other to avoid any kind of mismatch when we resize it later. Now we'll be adding the cross hatching strokes and for that we're gonna create another new layer and take the brush tool again and for this purpose I'm going to use a specialized brush made just for this kind of work and it's called the cross hatch scatter brush. It's a set of 20 brushes and you can download them from the website brusheasy.com or you can go to the description and find the download link. Click on them one by one and look for the appropriate brush depending on the look you want in your artwork. I'll be selecting this one. 
Hit enter to confirm the brush and adjust the brush size. Let's test it out before applying it to the image. Do you notice one thing? The angle of the brush is changing automatically with every click. I don't want that to happen automatically. I want it to happen when I want it. I'll press Ctrl or Command Z to undo the test strokes and then go to Windows here and click on Brush Settings and click on the Shape Dynamics here and bring down the Angle Jitter slider all the way down to zero. And if you can see, the angle is not changing anymore. We'll close the Brush Settings, set the Opacity and Flow to 100%. Adjust the brush size and click to add the hatchings. Now we'll change the angle of the brush so that it matches with the pattern and we can do that by pressing the right or left arrow keys and go on adding the cross hatches. This is the most time taking process and I would suggest you to do it with little patience because good things take time to happen. This is looking like our subject is on bandages. We can't leave it like this. So we'll add a layer mask to the crosshatch layer and brush tool is already active. Change the brush to hard round brush. Make sure the foreground color is black and we'll paint on the extra areas to mask them out. This is going to take a good amount of time. So I'm speeding it up and pumping up the beats so that you can enjoy the show. For some parts, you can also bring down the flow of the brush. Lastly, you can change the blend mode of this layer to multiply to blend it further. We'll rename the layer as cross hatching and refine it a little more. I'll do one more thing, I'll double click here on the blank space of the image layer to open the layer style dialog box and click on strokes. Stroke size I have kept it to 1 and we can change the color of the stroke to black. I'll adjust the opacity a little. I think it's looking good now. What do you say? We'll hold the shift key and click on the topmost and then the image layer leaving the background layer to select all the layers in between and convert them into a smart object. Let's rename this as subject composite and add a layer mask to it. Take the brush tool again and use the soft round brush to mask out some areas here. We are done with it and now we can resize and reposition it as we want. I will be placing it here and quickly move on to the next step of adding the message of the poster. We'll activate the text tool and click anywhere on the canvas to add the text and double click to edit it. I'll be using the font called prompt. It's free and available on Google fonts. We're gonna duplicate it by holding the alt or option key and click and drag to make a copy and again double click to edit. Add another text and use the font circle C. Place it here and change the color to black. Select all the text layers and resize them as per your choice. And lastly, add the final piece of text. I think it will look better if the stroke effect on the subject is not there. So I'll double click on the icon of the subject composite layer. A separate canvas with all the original layers will open. We'll just turn off the effect by clicking on the eye icon adjacent to it and it's gone. We'll press Ctrl or Command S to save and close the canvas and our main canvas is automatically updated with the changes we made. And with this, our today's poster is complete. Did you like it? Hopefully you did and I'm really happy that you sticked around till the end. Try this technique with other images and create some awesome sketches. And if you wanna be a painter with the brush, then this video will help you out.